This new pitch nose thing is actually uh, really long, eh? <laughs> it's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I'll be enthusiastic for the sake of the video, but for the most part, guys, when it comes to this type of stuff, um, I don't care too much for it, you know? It's more just a matter of, like, actually playing the game and seeing what the individual things do, but when there's, like, new features that are super, super noticeable, like, I think this year, the thing that I noticed the most was the goalkeeper stuff, which is pretty cool, but obviously you have to see how the game actually turns out when it's out. Um, I think most of these things are listed here, right? Which is cool, because considering that the pitch notes is incredibly long, um, I think it's going to make sense to... Be able to just do that, right? So the advanced of the MV11 match capture, um, all of this stuff here, there's no audio to. I don't know why. I, I think they forgot to add it. I don't know. Um, but in the actual website, there's there's just, if I play it, you guys can't hear anything, right? Um, but yeah, we're going to see what's the vibe with this. So uh, combining advanced 11 v 11 mocap. Okay, so the, the, the words I don't care about, it's more just the visuals. Uh, of how the players are moving across the pitch. Yeah, this stuff I'm not like too crazy invested in. Um, MLflow neural network algorithm is able to generate ball approach animations in real time, including stride adjustments. Okay, so without MLflow, there's a little transition to control the ball with MLflow. Oh, okay, I see it. So there is a little transition here, to be fair. I, I do see it here. The transition is there, right? A little bit of a different animation there. This one is a consistent animation. Yeah, that that is cool, to be fair. The, yeah, I would say that's pretty cool. Uh, full team authentic motion, tactical AI. We wrote the intelligence and tactical, uh, uh, appro tactical approach of all 22 players on the pitch, emphasizing their roles, personality. And this is all words for the most part. Uh, last year, we improved several aspects of attacking players with a positioning personality. This year, the new tactical AI. Uh, attacking players can make up to six times more decisions per second, better showcasing their nuanced per player personality. This allows them to be more aware of their surroundings, perform smarter runs and build-up play, exploit spaces in the defense, and generally be in the right place at the right time more often. Defending. Your defenders can operate more as a unit with the new tactical AI. Defensive work rates and fatigue have a significant impact on the defensive positioning of players. Placing any player that is not a center back in a center back position will negatively impact their defensive positioning. That's a good thing because seeing fullbacks at center back when a player is not naturally supposed to play there is a really stupid thing. So, but then again, like the thing is that it depends on how the gameplay is, right? Because if the whole meta for FIFA 21 wasn't to have the fast and agile players in the defensive position, then the through ball meta would have actually been worse, right? So yeah, it's cool you center back in the center back position, but there was a very, very small percentage of center backs that were actually good enough and agile enough to play in the center back position. Some players, uh, players like Ether Militao, Sergio Ramos' new card, uh, Tap Soba even, right? But there's just not a large list, right? So... Um, and it depends, too, because there are some players that play fullback that can play center back. So if those cards are possible, then they should be able to play in those positions anyways. But I don't think they'll be able to do that. Uh, our goal for tactical AI is to ensure players have balanced experience in terms of AI teammates. You know, we'll keep monitoring. Let me see this stuff here. The thing is, is that I don't I don't like this. So this one, they're showing defensive positioning. Right, so the whole switch, 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 switch thing, right? Um, you have to show your defensive AI doing different things, being more conservative, being more, uh, or, or showing pressure. Because in FIFA 21, it's so I don't know what they do when it comes to testing, right? Because when you use pressured tactics, your attacking AI is broken. Like the players just don't move in a similar way. Now, in some of the movements here, you can see the attack. Like it's a slower buildup, right? But you can see a player like this moving a little bit closer. But this movement is very general. Like they do that nowadays too. So nothing too crazy there. This one I'm interested in. So competitive settings, master switch. As we mentioned at the start of this deep dive, 
Oh, they did start. <laughs> Lol. Uh, one of the big pillars of Fear 22 is focus on aiming for gaming fairness by eliminating potential frustrating gameplay situations. Uh, we continue to have feedback sessions with pro players, members of the community, and hardcore FIFA players about how to increase fairness in certain situations. Some common topics always came up. Players wanted to have more control, have a higher uh, uh, skill ceiling, and experience more consistency in certain actions. As such, we are expanding the FIFA 22 competitive settings while mandatory in some modes. The competitive settings are available for all players in every mode of FIFA if they wish to play with them. The mandatory competitive settings. See, this is cool. I'm not going to say this is not cool. This is already cool, right? So manual competitive settings, contextual agile dribbling off. Good, depending on how your left stick dribbling is. Because the reason why people use agile dribbling in FIFA this year is because your left stick dribbling is so garbage. Auto clearance is off good. Auto flare passes off good. Auto shots off good. Assisted headers off good. Jockey manual good. And then through pass assistance semi good if done properly. But you guys don't know how to do your passes. So I don't know about that one. But modes where competitive settings are always active. Foot rivals, foot champions, online seasons, co-op seasons, and pro clubs. So do you guys have the same modes in Ultimate Team again with foot rivals and foot champions? It depends, man. It depends how you guys do your friendlies mode. Like, if you add a tournament mode in there, then it's fine. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do with that. Um, in online friendlies, the competitor uh, master switch is on by default. Competitor master switch. Oh. Jockey manual. You know what's funny is that, like, the jockey system, I like playing it on manual. But, again, their defending is trash in FIFA 21. It's one of the worst. Um, so... If they make manual defending good and manual jockey is good, because it is the manual jockey itself is good if you have 21. It's just the fact that they don't do defensive plays like they would on, you know, uh, the assisted one, right? So that's why I had to use it. I don't like it. I don't like the the feeling of a CPU doing stuff. So these competitive settings will give me more control to play the game myself, which I'm I, to be honest with you guys, like I'm totally down for. Uh, I'm not against this whatsoever. Uh, deeper match analysis, uh, tackles one off sides, penalty kicks, yellow cards, summary, possession, dribble. Yeah, this this we've always needed. It's always nice to see the stats of everything, I would say. Uh, first half, shooting is the one I'm interested in mo mostly. Finesse, header, volley. Okay, thank you. Because when we're doing ob objectives, right, you don't actually see this type of stuff. Like if you scored outside the box, if you didn't score outside the box, this stuff is incredibly helpful to have when it comes to doing objectives and, you know, seeing what a player offers in game, uh, passing, defending, block, save, clearances. Yeah. All of this is always, is always cool for sure. I'm down for that too. Uh, the all new player performance screen lets you know how each player has contributed to the team in the summary screen. This is cool for player reviews actually. Yeah. Th this is really cool for player reviews. I like this. Providing a detailed breakdown of their own overall performance in the possession, shooting, passing, defending, and goalkeeping scenes. Yeah, this I, this I like a lot. All the extra stats, I like for sure. And the menu doesn't look like garbage, which is good too. Yeah, this is, this is all cool. I like this. Um, kinetic air battles. Yeah, they, they talked about this a lot. I, I, I skip past this one because, I mean, they're pretty random for the most part. I don't like the animations of when your players fall that they do they have to stay there the whole time like all oh, the balls is like away from me now animate like extra animations when a command is already done is just unnecessary like this is this is where I always say that FIFA is like um I I can't even like think of the word it's like a not performance I can't even think of the word right now it's the type of game where it's like a promotional game like that's what it is right like when you have stuff like this it's just promotional it's so unnecessary like, the the action itself is cool. Once they get to the floor, it's cool. But they should just get up afterwards. Like, this whole, like, staying on the floor thing, like, I, I just, in, in FIFA, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you win the battle, whatever, get up, move on, you know? Um, explosive sprint. This is the one that people are a little bit concerned about because of the bridge. Uh, explosive sprint rewards timing and your intelligence on the ball. I don't even, let me see, hold on. Giving players a more noticeable acceleration when... Uh, sprint is pressed during the correct context. This mechanic uh, changes the dynamic of one-on-one -on -one situations. Explosive trinket we throw while already in possession. I want to see the commands for it. Explosive sprints are not fully effective when using them while moving in anything but a straight line. Okay, so it's a straight line. So you can't just like go here and then do it the other way. Is that what I'm seeing here? 
I mean, trigger while already in possession of the ball, moving with the ball cannot be activated during the ball approach. The timing here is important. Let me see the video. Straight line, straight line, straight line. Straight line, straight line. Without explosive sprint. Yeah, this is big. I was going to say like this. I wasn't seeing this part. I was like, this is like the same we have now. Ah. See, I don't mind this. Balance, 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 explosive at the same time. I'm okay with that. That That's a good mechanic too, I think. Because there's always, when you add a mechanic for attacking, you have to have a balance for the defensive side. Because let's just say, for instance, someone tackles really poorly, but then you use the explosive sprint at, this, at the right time, like in, in a real-life situation, then that's pretty sick, actually. But there's other variables that could affect this, obviously, uh, especially with how defensive AI acts, so that's to be seen. But generally speaking, just from this one-on-one -on -one situation, I do like the difference. Like, it's very balanced here, and then they're both explosive at the same time, but the attacker still has an edge, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, player humanization, true ball physics. This quality looks so weird. Why is it like this? This, uh, you don't really see this too often in the game nowadays. Like, this type of cross is really cool. I, I like this, man, because there's this switch genuinely like does not exist in fifa and there's so many times where i want to be able to make a switch like that which is uh pretty sick to be honest uh, we use real uh real world ball da data from football matches a foundation for your 22 ball physics helping us to improve authenticity of ball sort of okay new attacking tactics here we go okay so we are expecting uh, we are expanding tactic customization and instructions to enable more gameplay variety for FIFA 22 one of the main differences is breaking down the attacking tactics Slow build up, direct passing, chance creation is direct passing. EA, never do this thing that Pez does where it's a manager. Please don't ever do that. I don't ever want to see that. The way you guys do your tactics, it's either this or the way that you, you did it back in the day. Don't ever do this manager thing. It's the ugliest, stupidest thing in the world. Okay, so it's good that you guys changed it, but kept it the same in, in, in the same way. So players in the box set high for crosses, direct passing, slow build up. Definitely very interesting there. Um, so we have balance. This tactic is used for a balanced team that maintains its formation while building up the attack. Players will support and make runs when they think it's the right time to do so. Slow build-up players will support more an attacking build-up play rather than a direct approach with lots of forward runs. This tactic emphasizes a short passing game with a slower build-up, which is fine depending on how your defensive AI and how your second man presses, okay? I don't mind the tactic itself, but there needs to be a balance to it because people will play like losers in this game. Uh, long ball. The team will make runs for long balls played into space behind the opposing opposing back line or up to a target man for a direct attack that skips the midfield. Strikers who are fast with good attacking positioning attribute are the best at this tactic. Uh, fast buildup. This tactic pushes players forward for a faster buildup. But if you lose possession of the ball, you could find yourself open to a counterattack. Chance creation is how your team will attack. Balance this tactic is used to balance that maintains its formation. Okay, possession. Players will provide more close support to the dribbler in the attacking zone rather than going on forward and runs. Okay, so they mentioned specifically in the attacking zone. Interesting. Um, this tactic strengthens a short passing game to patiently wait for the chance to attack, but will rarely provide runs penetrating the opposing defensive line. Uh, direct passing. Once the team enters the attacking zone while in possession, players will create chances by making runs for passes into space behind the opposing back line. Striker strikers who are fast with good attacking positioning attributes uh, are usually well suited for this tactic, i.e. Mbappe, the glitch. Forward runs, this tactic pushes players forward deep into attacking areas, but if you lose possession of the ball, you could find yourself open to a counterattack. Okay. To create 16 distinct attacking tactics, each of their own uh, benefits and styles of play, there are more changes to tactics and instruction that we can found in defending section later on in the steep dive. Composed ball control. The new composed ball control animations are longer Longer two-touch animations that make controlling the ball more natural. This enables players to trap the ball in specific circumstances. Touch. And then touch into a direction, right? I don't mind this, actually. Yeah, I don't mind this. 
Because uh, when the ball's in the air and you touch it for the first time, sometimes you don't get like crazy good control of it. So if there's a balance of him being able to take that second touch, but me being able to defend and go into that empty space because I know he's going to touch the ball into that empty space, then that'll be this will be a pretty cool mechanic to have as well, I think. Um, but I could also see it being an issue if you do stuff like this for the defense, right? So if there's like a transition of like being able to do the first touch, but then clearing it immediately from like, you know, last second decision making, like instinct stuff, that's perfectly fine. But there's a problem with the defensive stuff where it's like if the pre if the player receives the ball, right? Whether in the air, whether on the floor, they do this drag touch backwards, and it's so easy for the attackers to get the ball afterwards. So hopefully that part is fixed because it's really annoying to concede a goal just because your player does that animation and then the attacker just sprints and gets the ball off him, right? So um, cushioning the ball and resulting in a more precise and accurate control uh, than any other type of control animation. Specific chained traps are present with composed ball control. The player is not sprinting. There are no opponents nearby. No opponents nearby. Okay, so there's probably gonna be like a more like pressure oriented thing, except for specific shielding animations holding L2, LT. Okay, the left stick has to remain still while performing composed ball control to allow for the animation to complete. Uh, this condition makes the impacted traps more responsive as any drastic changes in left stick and input allows a player to transition out of the animation. Specific attributes dictate how consistently they could be performed air ground uh, composed ball control at least 70 ball control and 60 agility shielding composed ball control at least 60 ball control and 60 strength okay so there's two different variables so they actually might make their physical oriented strikers decent which would definitely be interesting for sure uh the consistency scales up with the needed attributes with the cap being an average of 92 between the aforementioned attributes Let me see this. Uh, see this. This one looks like it has too much anime. Uh, it's too, excuse me. Um, this one looks like it has too much animations. It just looks slow, you know. We'll see. It depends, man. It really depends on how the defense kind of lines up, too. I think. Let me see what this looks like. It's with his knee first, right? Knee first. That's like that messy touch against Nigeria. Yeah, the animation, it could be too slow, but at the same time, like, I don't mind it. So I, it just depends. That That's going to be a thing I'll see in the actual game. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, control the ball. We focus on improving uh, the player's grasp over the ball, polishing many situations to more reliably obtain control of the ball, be it in the air or ground. We worked a lot of shielding fundamentals with a big emphasis on player personality, where strength and ball control attributes play a major part in the uh, efficacy of shielding. Sorry, my English is not that great, guys. <laughs> this also applies for contextual shielding, which happens in certain situations or circumstances when obtaining possession of the ball. Improved control for shielding air balls allowing. Okay, so like bottom line is that uh, there's two different attributes that attribute to whether or not a player can control the ball in a shielding way or in a more agile way, essentially. So, okay. Interesting, interesting. So Ronaldo might be a beast because he's like he's like a he's kind of like a combination of agile but also physical. So he might be a monster again, more m most likely. Uh, we focus on ground passes, lob passes, and lob through passes. Yeah, the lob passes were like donezo, man. Those things are should be good to better account for context of play, including opposition player positioning, de teammate positioning, general spicing, and many other types of situations. Animation refresh, ground passes, rebound the ground passing, target system online for a better target selection, spatial awareness. <clears throat> Semi-assisted ground pass were also refreshed with a new system. Lob passes and lob through balls. These types of passes have more consistency in height, trajectories, and leading and uh, leading and a better understanding of context. Uh, additional passing improvements, pass transitions, improve the response for allows transition between different passes, the through pass. Receiver system is able to analyze more receipt. This this is just words. This is just words for the most part. Shooting. Uh, for shooting, we focus on a variety of fixes and improvements, but also made balancing changes to three key aspects. Improve shooting consistency in easy one-on-one -on -one situations, which you guys have mentioned in the past, so I'm going to brush right past, right past that one. It's funny, though, because... 
the shooting that we have in FIFA 21 right now is the best shooting we've ever had, but it's still garbage. Does that make sense? And that's what them explaining, like, yeah, we have better shooting consistency in 1v1s and stuff. And, you know, like, there's... The, the thing that I tried to explain over the course of the years when it comes to the gameplay rant is that there are high percentage strikes that are FIFA-related, and then there's high percentage strikes that are logical goals, right? Like, the text opportunity that he had in that competitive tournament, that should be an easy goal, especially with the best version of Mbappe's card, with, I believe, 99 composure, 99 shot power, 99 finishing has the body type, like just has everything, right? So those are just high percentage that should be going in. Uh, like I said, 1v1 finishing in FIFA should be one of the easiest things to do when you get into a logical high percentage strike because the whole skill is in the attacking and the defending, not the fact that someone can use manual goalkeeping, not the fact that they can push out their goalie like an idiot and have their defender go into the net. I absolutely hate that in FIFA. It's complete garbage and should not be a thing. And nobody can argue with that against me that I'm telling this right now. I'm very close-minded when it comes to this. The manual goalkeeping and that specifically are the two stupidest things in the game, okay? I really hate that a defender goes into the net when you push the goalie out like an idiot. It's just incredibly dumb. But it also depends on how defensive AI animation is and the shot accuracy when I'm facing the net. So there are other variables that affect it. But in FIFA 21, it was complete garbage, so... Uh, shots from different uh, difficult situations with a defender being close to the ball carrier have reduced conversion rate to correspond with the difficulty of the situation. Words wise, good. Uh, shots from wide tight angles have reduced on target on on goal percentage, making them less consistent to score. Again, they're kind of like that in the game right now. So it's like, you know, we'll see what that's like in game dribbling. Oh, you should have a shooting video, but you don't because these are words for the most part. Yeah, these are words. These are words. Besides numerous fixes and overall improvements, it's also worth mentioning that we've changed the green shot timing window, allowing you to hit a green more consistently than before. We'll keep monitoring this change to make sure that time shots are kept balanced and not overpowered. Green shot timing with a bigger window. I'm still not gonna like they they better make shooting good enough where I don't have to use time shots because time shots are so stupid. I just I just I hate them. I hate when the skill is involved is is in the attacking and the defending, and then I have to also worry about hitting a green time shot for a more consistent strike. Green time shots I don't mind if it's from a lower percentage strike from a logical point of view. I don't mind that at all, okay? But when it's a high percentage strike and the fact that I have to hit a green is the stupidest thing because hey. Maybe Tex hits the green in that tournament and he scores. Should he have to hit a green for a situation like that? No, never in a million years. That's not a high percentage. That's not a low percentage strike at all. So that's words for the most part. Uh, for FIFA 22, we focus on dribbling fundamentals and added a few mechanics to spice up your players. Your left stick dribbling was the worst it's ever been. So that's got to be fixed. Let's just, let's just knock that right out of the park, okay? Uh, super knock-on, double double flick, right stick forward. The knock-on ball distance is farther if you flick and hold the right stick. Okay, so just another situation where pace is going to be incredibly important. This is basically Mbappe versus Hummels right here. But then Hummels with his absolute defensive masterclass still gets an incredible tackle from behind. Don't know how he got that. But yeah, uh, riding, tackle tuck, uh, riding tackle touches allows you to dribble past some tackles with your left stick input depending on the timing of your dribble inputs. I highly doubt that, man. I highly that that this When you guys talk about like responsiveness stuff, I doubt it. I really do. We're talking eight plus years of inconsistent gameplay. I doubt it, okay? But we'll see. Better dribbling control at high speeds with closer touches and more gradual deceleration when releasing sprint while dribbling. Quicker turns and exits during dribbles. This mimics the touches and quickness of some of the world's greatest dribblers. Added more player personality during dribbling, especially when sprinting, performing knock-ons, dribbling under pressure, and changing directions drastically. Manual dink dribble touch. Press R3 during a dribble to perform a dink touch while dribbling, perfect for avoiding the defender's leg. Uh, contextual dink touch, only enabled when the contextual agile dribbling option is turned on. We're going to skip right past that because we're not even going to use that. 
Skill moves. Skill moves balancing. The main goal is to balance skill moves and make them effective if timed and executed correctly. After listening to some feedback or to feedback from the community and pros, you made the following balance changes. Removed skill move cancel for La Croqueta, Elastico, Reverse Elastico, and the Scoop Turn. Reduced animation speed for bridge and directional nutmegs. Drag back spin for touch turn and step overs can now be canceled. Drag back spin for touch turn. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, that one's good actually. And step overs can now be canceled. Step overs canceled. Drag to drag skill move can now be triggered by holding right stick backwards. Really? Oh, that's good. The heel to heel skill was more difficult to successfully perform. Okay. The new animations for directional nutmeg 90 degree turns. New and Hmm. I know which one that one is, so that's interesting. First time skill moves. One important change that we want to highlight are the first time skill moves, which are something we received lots of feedback on. With this improvement, skill moves can now be executed in first time situations as the ball is coming towards a player. In the past, this was only possible with fake shots uh, or a Rabon or a um, Ronaldo chop. Sometimes a scoop turn depends. Like those ones were pretty inconsistent, I would say. Um, for balancing purposes, first time skill moves uh, from the following changes. Certain moves cannot be performed first time, such as step overs, body feints, and the bridge directional nutmeg skill moves in first time situations will be hard to control while dribbling, especially if the incoming ball velocity is high. First time skill moves will not work for dri from driven passes. That is awesome. I like this. That's cool. I like that. that. That's a cool addition for sure. Uh, new skill moves for touch turn. Okay, this I have to, I have to like copy this because it's always her new skill moves are crazy. Skilled bridge hold L2 plus double tap R1. First time spin hold L1, R1 as the ball comes towards the players for the first time. Scoop turn fake. Hold left stick in the opposite direction after doing a forward scoop turn. Okay. This was a really noticeable thing as a goal here rewrite. The, the animations are definitely different. Um, okay. This is, this is a new one. I will admit this is a new one. I, I hope they took they took out the falling over like a log animation because it's so ugly, man. It's the stupidest thing ever. That one is cool. That's cool too. I like that. That's cool. I like that. That's a sick animation too. That's pretty that's pretty sick. I like that one too. I mean if the player shoots it properly with manual heading to the bottom left and he probably scores it right, but directly at the goal here it's a sick save. It is a sick save. Uh, defensive behavior, fair and predictable outcomes. Uh, improved tackle animation selection, resulting in cleaner outcomes. Uh, yeah, you guys said that a lot of times. Uh, better ball speed and angle for successful tackles, increasing the likelihood of the ball going towards your teammates. Better ball speed and angle for successful tackles. So possession-based tackles, good, good. Uh, new possession-style tact tackles. Hmm. Aim to improve the tackler's ball retrieval rate on good tackles when the situation is appropriate depending on player personality. Hmm. Uh, reduce launching distance for uh, automatic tackles in general, especially during sprinting. Uh, reduce situations when automatic tackles would trigger unfairly from behind the opponent. Um, improve tackling for air balls during an opponent's flick up or chest trap. Oh, good. So, because they have no animations for tackles in the air. Like, it, it was crazy because when the rainbow flick was, like, really effective, there was just nothing. The player just, like, stood there. They're like, I don't know what to do. So, air tackles are very important. So, that's good. 
Um, added more variety on ball deflections following a block. Uh, automatic blocks are now less effective when the player is not using the jockey. Auto blocks are now less effective when the player is not using the jockey. Automatic blocks are not as successfully performed and have higher chances of missing. Okay. Uh, controls of personality, shoulder challenges, seal outs, tap circle while the side of your opponent when defending with contextual Trevor, shoulder to shoulder. See, your problem with this this year too, this is a really huge mechanic thing that was an issue, like a huge, huge issue, is when you go to shoulder to shoulder against someone and you're running, your player, when he is ahead of the attacker, does not receive possession of the ball. So I really hope you guys, like I'm, I'm saying on a consistent level, this it's too often where they just have no registration to the ball when they're in front of it. And it's just super, super annoying when you win that like physical battle, right? Uh, tap circle to close to the moment to the shot pass while your player is within the passing lane. Oh, you guys have manual blocks now. Thank God. Oh, oh my God. They have manual blocks now. They're so there. There was there was no specific control for manual blocks in FIFA. They were very like go to the attacker base off. So now if you can block, like you could do this with slide tackles, right? But the tackle one is so inconsistent. Okay. Uh, while your player is with the passing lane or shooting course, if timed appropriately, this will launch a manual block, which has a higher possibility of succeeding and results in faster contact with the ball compared to automatic blocks. Good. Good, good, good. More tackling personality. Balance the win ratio rated to personality in order to for high-rated tacklers to win the ball more often when compared to lower-rated players. Yeah, it's given jockey max speed. Added personality effect to sprint jockey max speed, basing it on the player's defensive awareness attributes. Okay, so that's on defensive awareness now. The speed scales from a 60 to a, to a 90, uh, 99 defensive awareness, which any player below 60 having the minimum speed will perform a sprint jockey while performing a sprint jockey. Okay. Assisted jockey versus skill moves. Improved assisted jockey behavior against skill move, allowing defensive players to better keep up with skills while jockey. Yeah, that's going to, I'm turning on competitive mode, so. Most likely. We'll see how the game turns out in competitive mode. If it's done properly, then, you know. Um, this one, interceptions. Uh, one of the biggest pieces of uh, feedback we received in the last year was about how even uh, when you felt you were in the right place at the right time, you wouldn't always be able to intercept certain passes. We improved many aspects of normal interceptions in FIFA 22. Uh, disrupt interceptions are a mix between controlling the ball and blocking. The goal here is to disrupt the course of the pass, even if that means not retaining the ball. They, these disrupt interceptions can all be performed by user-controlled players. Good. And with the left stick inputs directed towards the pass path ahead of the ball or receiver. Good. Uh, player personality also plays a big part here with attributes determining how far players can reach to intercept. How quick they can react. Blah, blah. Uh, teammate contain. This year we've introduced... Several changes to teammate containers before. Hold R1 while defending in order to have an AI control teammate contain the ball carrier. This is an important one. Uh, we're introducing teammate contain stamina. Every player has their own contained stamina. So it's a separate thing to the regular stamina, which is cool. I like that. That allows them to keep containing as long as it is not depleted. Contained stamina drains while the R1 is being held. And once the contained teammate runs out of contained stamina, they will go back to their regular instructions and enter a cooldown period for a few seconds where they cannot contain anymore. The contained stamina is represented by a UI element about the teammate that is currently pressing. Player personality is what determines how close the teammate gets to the ball, carrying while possessing. Defensive awareness, defensive work rates, and and remaining in match stamina. The goal for teammate contains that someone like a world class defensive midfielder is more effective, like Conte probably, right? Player switching. Oh, your right stick switching was god awful. We wanted to provide players with more ways to switch, as players can have different priorities when switching. We've added four new options, including icon switching and player rotation. Icon switching, this is a new form of switching that provides players with a uh, surefire way to select their desired player. To activate icon switching, press R3 while defending, and you will see UI elements above four of your players, each with a specific direction, like in the image below. After pressing R3, you can flick the right stick to the direction shown on the icon above the player's head, and the switch will happen. There is also an option in Control Center to disable icon switching. You guys should have showed an example of this because this is this is probably going to be a very big deal for me because your right stick switching is awful. It's so garbage. UI elements of four of your players. Each with a specific direction, like in the image. 
UI elements each with a specific direction image below. After pressing R3, you can flick the right stick in the direction shown on the icon above the player's head. I, I think I get it now. So there's going to be a direction. Interesting. So when you press it, there's going to be a direction on their head. So when you move into that direction, you know who exactly it'll switch to. Not bad. Not bad. We'll see. We'll see, because that's actually promising, to be fair. Uh, more switching options. Player rotation. New option for right stick switching. Allows you to move the next player switch indicator, essentially allowing you to pre-switch to a player before confirming. Once you are satisfi satisfied with your choice, press manual switch L1, LB to confirm. Move the next player switch indicator, essentially allowing you to pre-switch. The movement of the indicator is based on the current position. Auto switching. In addition to the air balls and loose balls, while uh, switching option, we add two new options: one for only on air balls and one for only on loose balls. Auto switching now has five different ways to function, including manual and automatics, allowing you to decide. This is promising stuff. I want to see what this is like in the actual game. To be honest with you, like that's actually pretty sick. Uh, directional clearances and technical clearances. This year, we introduced new directional clearances, which require more skill to successfully execute, but also offer more control to players when compared to classic clearances. Okay, so directional clearances, this is a new default option for clearances with ball trajectories now following the left stick input as much as they can while still perform, uh, trying to perform the earliest contact with the ball. These clearances still have assistance in some specific cases, like when aiming at your own goal, at other players, or in a very urgent situation. For reference, classic clearances do not take into consideration your left stick inputs and power, and your players try to perform the first available contact in any direction. Technical clearance R1, uh, XB, uh, a new mechanic that always tries to kick the ball forward, and as far as from the area, kick the, the kick direction is always... To the upfield, no target with some aim input taken into consideration. Technical clearances can be used so when you're in possession of the ball close here. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I like that actually. More tactics and instruction, customization, depth, and width sliders now range from 1 to 100, allowing for more nuanced customization. Yeah, these types of sliders are better, EA. This, it's good that you do this. That's way better. It's good for player reviews too, because I could just use them on the bounced, like what the default is, and then see what their base characteristics are like. That's be, that'll be pretty cool. I like that. Uh, free roam instructions for CDMs. Whoa. Allow for deep lying playmaker role coming closer to support the ball handler and also dropping deeper to receive a pass during possession or build up. Uh, set, uh, step up instructions for center backs and fullbacks can have them step out of position and mark opposing attackers tighter when they are free to receive a ball. This is the inverse of uh, step up. Overlap instructions for center backs only for three or four defender formations, allowing the center back to overlap wide in the correct positions to provide attacking support to teammates. Building on big old moments from last year, the improved big old moments. Like the celebrations? I skip celebrations, so I don't really care about that, to be honest with you guys. No BS! Player movement, uh, max top speed. This changing more closely to mirror and real life speed of professional football athletes, and it requires players to run for each, run for longer to reach their new max speed. Controlled deceleration. Some players with higher attributes can decelerate faster when transitioning into dribble or trapping. New star player movement added new visuals for a few players that moving in certain conditions, such as Phil Foden when sprinting and Sun Hyung Min when dribbling set pieces uh we made several set piece improvements ng free kick wall visuals have been refreshed with the intent of making players feel more lively okay david beckham free kicks added unique animations to replicate the iconic technique refresh of re uh, pk animations um earlier call short push-up Throw in improvements, more intelligent throwing now consider the positions of opponents, re resulting in more accuracy and possession retention. Um, earlier call short push up R1 and cannot be pressed before the goal kick starts, having the players already start in the desired position. Good, because here's the problem with this one, right? Before is that you actually had to play on the possession tactic for that to be a thing, which was so incredibly stupid, okay? So now you can actually call them close when you're doing the goal kick, which I do like a lot. 
increased shot accuracy in free kicks, especially when applying a lot of uh, side spin during a free kick. This is affected by the amount of spin your player's curve free kick animations. Okay. Hold out R2 doing a quick free kick to hang onto it for a few more seconds and give your teammates more time to get into position. CPU AI. The CPU AI is a very important area for gameplay with a lot of players focusing on career mode. For players who like a challenge, we rewrote defending competitor mode CPU AI with something we call threat-based defending when the CPU better understands... Um, underst uh, with the CPU better understanding who the players they should mark are, which off-ball runs they should chase, and which dribblers... Okay, so that's just words. That's stuff you have to see in-game. Um, physical play, another area of focus this year was to improve the physicality of players, mainly focusing on fairness of outcomes. To accomplish this, we made the following changes. Increase strength attribute impact and emphasize strength uh, differentiation, differentiation between players when involved in physical play. Uh, pass shot tackle back improvements. Tackle back refers to when a, the tackler performs a good tackle on an attacker, but the attacker quickly recovers and maintains possession of the ball or gets it back. To prioritize fairness in the game, we, may, we have made changes to reduce the amount of tackle backs. However, while some of these changes can impact visual fidelity in specific instances, they create a more positive and satisfying experience for the defender. 100%. It's the animation choices that you have when someone defends properly and the, the animation that the attacker does from a good challenge as well. Uh, pass and shot improvements. Uh, we've also prioritized the continuity of the shooting animation of the opponent is close behind the shot taker. Okay. How much stuff do we have left? Oh, not too much. Uh, FIFA attributes. We increased the FIFA attributes that were introduced last year for kickoff, online season, online friendlies. Uh, attackers forwards. Okay, this I don't care too much about. Additional changes. Net physics. Increased consistency and actually of assisted headers and modes that can, can be used in. Multiple new celebrations, including time checks, short points, T for two. Star celebrations. Gameplay perks for career mode and pro. Okay. Uh, to better respond to some feedback during the FIFA cycle, we worked hard on a feature that took a significant effort from multiple teams. In FIFA 22, we can work on some aspects of the gameplay through the live tuning tool and roll out changes to players without requiring a full title update. This can allow us to make tuning changes faster with, a more, with more frequency and also keep, excuse me, working on the balance of the game. We'll be logged and tracked just like release notes and title updates. Stay tuned. Good live updates. Good. We don't have to work, work for a title update for this. Good. It's finally you guys. It's finally you guys did this. This is good. This took a. This took a very long time. You don't have to wait for a title update to do specific hot fixes for certain things. Good. If something is too overpowered, they'd be like, "Hey guys, you know, you may want to adjust this or turn it off completely because it's garbage." And then, okay, we'll just turn it off completely right now. That's 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 good. That's good. Um. So words wise, guys. Words wise. This is pretty promising, to be honest. There's a lot of stuff in this that I am impressed by uh, for specific mechanics, 100%. I like the new, I like the way that the new tactics work. Uh, I like the way that the player can come close to the goalkeeper now. Um, the acceleration, deceleration of certain players and certain attributes to those players. Maybe it'll make physical type players more effective. Uh, I skipped past a lot of this stuff because, to be honest with you guys, a lot of it is just mumbo jumbo for the most part. Uh, so there's no real reason to, there's no real reason to, you know, really go in depth with it because it's just words at the end of the day. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of when we actually play the game and check it out. But from these specific, uh, things that they introduce into this game, I am impressed with a lot of them, whether or not they're, you know, going to be an overpowered thing. They are cool things to add to the game that don't have a lot of crazy variables to for it to be overpowered. Uh, I am concerned about the bridge, but if the defending works a certain way, then it's not necessarily going to be a problem. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I'm impressed with, I would say, 75% of it. 25 is just mumbo jumbo for the most part. Uh, but obviously, when you actually play the game, um, it's going to be a different situation. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.